Hello friends, welcome to Coding Garden. Welcome to A View from the Garden, your weekly programming tech interesting things news show. First up in interesting news, we have this article from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln that talks about uh, how uh, a scientist, John DeLong, discovered a type of organism that can uh, can eat viruses. Um, so the experiments shown that a virus-only diet, which the team calls virovory, is enough to fuel the psychological growth and even population growth of an organism. I don't know a lot about this, but it seems super interesting, so definitely check out that article. Uh, this article from Mac Rumors uh, talks about how Safari turns 20. Uh, this was yesterday. Uh, so Safari is officially 20 years old. Uh, they even link the article from 2003 the Apple press release, uh, where Apple was talking about how they unveiled Safari, the fastest browser on the Mac. And we predict that many will feel it's the best browser we've ever created. So uh, if you want to feel old, <laughs> uh, Safari was released 20 years ago. OK, now for interesting builds. Uh, these are various things I found um, on, on Reddit that, uh, that people have built uh, that seem pretty cool. Uh, so this is from a user, pdrift, where they built a portable Raspberry Pi project. So they actually took the keyboard from a BlackBerry, uh, and they have this screen here. And they 3D printed everything to create an enclosure for a Raspberry Pi. Uh, they, they detail it uh, here on Imager. You can see all of the, the build process, uh, the prototyping. They did 3D printing to get everything going. Super interesting build. Uh, this build uh, comes from the user Mr. Dealey, uh, and it's a Raspberry Pi retro TV. So they have this little uh, mini TV here that they 3D printed. Uh, and it allows you to play uh, games on the, the Retro Pi, which is an emulator that runs on the Raspberry Pi. So they, they show their build process here, which is pretty cool as well. Uh, and then lastly, uh, this is an article titled Making the Ultimate Guitar Web Player Easier to Practice With. Now, they didn't build a too much custom hardware, but they did use this pedal that allowed them to control uh, the page. So if you've ever played guitar before, you know that you either have to have like an auto scroller so that it scrolls if you're reading the, the tabs on the page. Uh, and so they bought this thing and they programmed it so that they could tap it with their foot to go forward or backwards while they were playing guitar. So uh, that's a pretty cool article as well. Now for interesting YouTube videos. Uh, this video was published by Comf Computer File, a great channel you should subscribe to if you're not, which is what do comp computer scientists read? So Computer File does all kinds of videos and interviews all kinds of people. And the, the sound check question that they did throughout last year was, uh, what's your favorite book or what's your favorite computer science book? So in this episode, uh, it's basically all of the takes from last year. And you can see uh, what the When I found a were. book that does an undergraduate course at the right sort of level, and Andrew Tannenbaum, you know, from Freie University in uh, Holland, writes very good books. And certainly the stuff of Brian's, Brian's history and memoir of Unix I've greatly enjoyed. But in some ways, this is more general, and I, I would certainly put it on my top sure. shelf. Oh, no, top shelf. Accessible sure shelf. <laughs> yeah, The Mythical Man Month is definitely a good read if you haven't checked that one out. Uh, this video comes from, um, what's the channel name? Live Overflow. Uh, this channel has tons of really good resources for uh, networking and computer security. And recently, he's been doing this uh, general security education series where he does deep dives. This specific video is on computer networking. So now in this video, I will try to explain it to you, the basics of computer networking. At the start, I will be using paper to illustrate networking. But at the end, we will make the bridge over to sockets and bits and bytes. Yeah, so definitely check it out. Uh, he gives a good overview of everything. And then he also has deep dives on what is a server, uh, what is a protocol. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, definitely check it out. Uh, this video comes from Halden. Uh, and it's how they tried using virtual monitors for a week. So they got the uh, MetaQuest Pro VR headset, which also supports augmented reality. And uh, I'll let him tell you about it. In this video, I'm going to spend a full week working with a portable triple monitor setup. How will I take these monitors with me, I hear you ask? Well, here they are. <laughs> so uh, the video is fantastic, really well edited. Uh, he's got good jokes and stuff like that. Um, and he tries it everywhere. So he tries it on a bus. He tries it at his home. He tries it in a coffee shop. He even tries it on an airplane. I'm very interested to see what this will actually be like. And I hope this test is actually worth it because I've bought literally four seats on this airplane just to, so that I could be able to actually film this sequence. Yeah. And so I don't know how he did it, probably some kind of like after effects, but to get the actual video to show what he was seeing is super cool as well. So this video was really well done. And honestly, like I think about this all the time. 
this is my break timer, by the way, so I'm just going to talk, talk over it. Um, but I think about this all the time. Like, we, we always see, like, in science fiction, the idea of, like, augmented reality and, like, having our screens with us all the time and stuff like that. And this is kind of, like, the first time that we can actually do this kind of thing. So it's super interesting, it's interesting to see, like, what the tech is like that we have right now and, like, is it actually feasible? So definitely go check out his video. Uh, this video comes from Fireship. Uh, if you know him, you know he's got jokes. Purple tunnel, macular degeneration, social isolation, an excellent salary, and back problems. If that sounds good to you, might I recommend a career in programming? But <laughs> so uh, in this video, uh, he doesn't... So Fireship sometimes mostly focuses on web dev-related things, but in this video... He also talks about uh, what do you do if you want to do desktop development? What do you do if you want to do mobile development? Uh, what do you do if you want to do web dev, front end versus back end? And he kind of gives like a high level roadmap for all of that. So definitely check out that video and have a good laugh as well. Uh, this video comes from Network Chuck, and it is the Hacker's Roadmap, how to get started in IT in 2023. This path has eight parts. The first five apply to everyone in IT. I don't care what you want to do. The last three will get a bit more hacking cybersecurity specific. Now, make sure you watch until the end. I'm going to give watch until the end. <laughs> but uh, uh, definitely check out that video, especially if you're newer to IT, you're newer to the industry, and you're trying to get a lay of the land and figure out what you need to do. This will give you a good intro so you can figure out what you need to go Google next. Uh, this video from uh, the Versal channel, this is Lee Robinson. Uh, I think that's his name. Sorry if it's not <laughs> talking about uh, what's new in Next 13.1. Next.js 13.1 is here and it includes improvements to both the pages directory and the app directory that is in beta. Let's dive in and take a look at some of the new features that have been released. So First definitely check out that video, rundown of all the new features. It's awesome. This uh, video from James Q. Quick talks about 10 amazing conferences for JavaScript developers in 2023. Uh, so this is 10 conferences that are going to be happening that you could potentially check out or ask your employer to, uh, to send you to uh, if you do have a budget for that kind of thing. All right, now on to developers in te and tech. Uh, this article uh, published on XDA Developers, Google announces official Android RISC-V support. Um, I didn't know what RISC-V was, but I looked into it and also talks about it in this article. So RISC-V is, is special because it's a free and open ISA, and vendors that want to make cheap IoT products will be interested in using RISC-V to help develop low-cost chips. So right now, uh, ARM is kind of the main thing for that, and this is like a competitor to ARM, but it is open source. So if you look at their Wikipedia, uh, RISC-V is an open standard instruction set architecture. That's that ISA acronym based on established RISC principles. So it's really cool uh, that uh, Android is going to be supporting it now. Um, well, there will be more options for IoT, for hardware. Uh, and Largs Bergstrom, our Android's director of engineering, said that he wants RISC-V to be seen as a tier one platform on Android. So more devices that, that support this are going to be supported and, and, and will be released uh, going forward, which is pretty sweet. Uh, this is news uh, about HDR support in Linux. So new Linux gaming milestone with the latest framework from Josh Aston. So uh, this was published by at Plagman. Uh, HDR can now be enabled for real games. Tested it tonight on my AMD desktop with Halo Infinite. So imagine running Halo on Linux, which is pretty crazy. Uh, and then this is another tweet by um, uh, Fi, uh, Fizz Ballsocket that shows a heat map. So HDR is high dynamic range. Uh, and it shows a heat map of what's actually happening here. And so with, with HDR, the, you have blacker blacks and whiter whites. And so this is really big news for, for gaming on Linux. Um, in similar news, uh, GNOME has Hackfest that they, they typically do. I also just learned about this when I was reading about, about all these things. Um, but a Hackfest is when, when they get everyone together, uh, almost like a, a mini conference of people that contribute to GNOME. Uh, to, to work on new things. And at the proposed Hackfest here, uh, they talk about they potentially will be working on HDR support. So this is, these, this is more uh, uh, Linux devs that will potentially be working on HDR to get even more support uh, for this kind of thing, which is pretty cool. Uh, in other news, uh, Ether SX2 development has been indefinitely suspended. So if you didn't know about this, this was a PS2 emulator, and uh, the developer suspended the project because... He, he was receiving threats from people in, in the community. It's kind of sad. So in this article, uh, Techlog360, they talk about it. Uh, so Talareth, the developer, received daily emails with aggr re aggressive requests to improve the PlayStation 2 emulator or release a version of the PlayStation 3 emulator. 
These requests have become increasingly aggressive, leading to death threats against the developer. Talareth is tired of this behavior and does not see the point in continuing to work on a project that no longer pleases him. It's unfortunate because it's probably just one lame person with a bunch of like email accounts and bots that have been spamming him. But uh, things like this happen in the open source world as well. Like if you, you've seen projects with uh, salty people in the GitHub issues talking about like, well, why, why doesn't your project support this feature? Or when is this going to happen? Calm down, people. <laughs> you're you're going to force people to stop working on open source projects altogether. Um, so this is pretty sad news um, uh, about Talareth and, and EtherSX2. Uh, in other news, uh, this was an article published um, on Tom's corner of the internet, uh, tomforb.es. Uh, it's titled, I scanned every package on PyPy, which is the Python package index. Uh, if you're from the JavaScript world, this is like the NPM of the Python world, uh, and found 57 live AWS keys. Uh, this is a, a pretty common problem, even, even on like GitHub repos where people accidentally commit their keys. Uh, and so in this article, they detail how they did it with like a, a pretty fancy regular expression, uh, and then talk about the results and some of the, ki the kinds of keys that they've found. Uh, so if you're familiar with AWS keys, you know that there are different types with different types of access. So like root keys, user keys, service keys, and you're able to determine that uh, when you find a specific key, you can query their API to see what it's capable of. Um, so he did that and um, uh, it's pretty cool. So check out his article on, on how he did that. Uh, this article from uh, Tristan Hume talks about uh, production Twitter on one machine, 100 gigabits per second. Uh, Nix and NVMe are fast. Uh, so this article breaks down like how you would run Twitter on a single machine and what it would cost. Um, and it's also kind of an exercise in like the classic uh, uh, system design interview question on how would you design Twitter. Um, so it breaks down how you would do the timeline and tweet uh, distribution logic, HTTPS request serving, image serving, video search ads and notifications, historical tweet and image storage, ML-based timeline, and he just gives a, a, a rundown and a breakthrough of how all of this would happen, and then uh, at the end also talks about how much it would cost to run on, on a single machine as well. So definitely check that article out. Uh, this article from Strager uh, is called, Is Coding in Rust as Bad as in C++? Um, so Strager also streams on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Strager. Definitely check him out. Uh, and he just talks about, um, he wanted to compare the two, uh, and it's fun because he actually had uh, uh, and a, a, a hypothesis going into this. So his hypothesis was the Rust port will be slightly fewer lines of code than the C++ version. For full builds, C++ will take longer to compile than Rust. For incremental builds, Rust will take longer to compile than C++. So these were his hypotheses, hypotheses and then he went in to test it. I'm not going to show you the results. Definitely check out his article if you want to see the results. Uh, but this was a pretty fun read as well. Uh, this was a Reddit post from user uh, the Optimus Rhyme, uh, who is actually the, the developer of this game, Kainga, Seeds of Civilization. I actually hadn't heard of this game, but their, their write-up is super interesting because it talks about what it's like to be an indie developer, putting all your time and money into working on this thing, and uh, the fact that he actually hasn't made profit yet, uh, having worked on this, this title for so long, uh, and talks about burnout as well. So th this is a really good read as well. Now, for JavaScript news, interesting libraries, and new releases. Um, that wasn't supposed to happen. Here we go. Uh, 2022 JavaScript Rising Stars was released. So if you haven't heard of it, risingstars.js.org uh, details uh, packages on GitHub that uh, are increasing in number of stars. And this is the rundown for everything that happened in 22, 2022. So they talk about popular projects, front-end frameworks, uh, all of the various front-end framework ecosystems, mobile, desktop, and they give a rundown of, of all of the popular things within each of those ecosystems. So definitely check this out. Um, and I'm definitely going to be doing a deeper dive on all of the stuff that they, they rank in this article as well. Uh, this article was published uh, last week by Evan Yu, uh, the creator of and maintainer of Vue.js and also Vite and a lot of other open source things. But this is 2022, a year in review uh, from the uh, viewpoint. So it's about Vue.js. Um, and it just recaps what happens. One thing that I want to point out, and it's from the what to expect in 2023, there's this really interesting section on vapor mode. So vapor mode is an alternative compilation strategy that we've been experimenting with inspired by Solid and probably also Svelte. So if you're familiar with Solid and Svelte, they are front-end frameworks that when you uh, build your app for distribution, it doesn't include 
an entire runtime. It only includes the things that it needs. And so they're experimenting with doing a similar thing with Vue.js. So uh, given the same Vue single file component, they promote compiled it into JavaScript output that is more performant, uses less memory, requires less runtime support code compared to the current virtual DOM based output. So this is huge news. Uh, and uh, Vue will definitely be a contender in the in the solid and, and svelte sphere of things that don't use uh, a virtual DOM. Okay. Next up, uh, we have this release from uh, CM Griffin G, uh, also a Twitch a streamer, twitch.tv slash CM Griffin G. Uh, he published a uh, boring. Boringer avatars. <laughs> so I think boring avatars is an existing thing, um, but this is it recreated to work with several different front end frameworks. Uh, so if you've ever uh, needed to have um, avatars based on a user ID or based on an email or something like that, you can do that with Boringer avatars. You essentially pass in a string or a number, and you're always going to get back the same generated avatar uh, depending on what you pass in. But they used a library that allowed them to publish for all of these different supported frameworks. So you can look at let's say the Svelte examples, um, and uh, this will show you how you, you could add it to your code uh, in your Svelte code base, which is pretty slick. Uh, this is a, a, li a, a library in the Python ecosystem I found called YouTube Archiving Made Simple. It's called YARC, um, and this essentially allows you to archive a, uh, an entire YouTube channel. So you've probably seen command line tools for downloading YouTube videos. This lets you do that, but it keeps track of what you've downloaded. So you can point it at a channel download all the videos available, and then it will keep it up to date. So the next time you run the tool, it will download the videos that you're missing. So this is really cool, uh, especially as a content creator, like being able to analyze my own YouTube videos. Um, but also you could archive some of your favorite uh, YouTubers uh, channels for viewing offline. It also generates a uh, a web-based viewer for all of your offline videos as well. Uh, in other news, uh, TanStack Query version 4.21 uh, comes with the Svelte, Svelte Query Adapter. So if you have not seen it, uh, TanStack is um, uh, a tool, <laughs> a collection of tools for doing a lot of things that we typically do in front-end development. So you've got TanStack Query, TanStack Table, TanStack Router, TanStack Virtual, React Charts, uh, but uh, they've been working on getting these libraries to be framework agnostic because this is formerly known as React Query now TanStack Query. And if you look at TanStack Query, it now supports a lot of different frameworks, including Svelte. So this is pretty big news. Uh, and if you haven't used this library before, essentially um, it makes data loading, caching, retries, all of the things you typically deal with in HTTP requests, really, really easy. Um, and now it has support for Svelte, which is, which is pretty awesome. Um, and lastly, in releases, Vuetify version 3.1 was released. Um, and this is big news because they also have a release pipeline called Labs. So if you're familiar with uh, Material UI or MUI, which is the material design component library for React, Vuetify is the material design component library for Vue, or one of them. Um, and uh, labs is a feature very similar to the Labs feature in Material UI that essentially allows you to use components before they're in the core library. So you can actually try them out, uh, but know that they're not necessarily a stable uh, component yet, uh, but, which is pretty sweet because you don't have to wait for uh, them to be released and you don't have to use an unstable version. You can just know that only those components under Labs um, are potentially unstable. So definitely check that out. Uh, lastly, uh, Coding Garden uh, is brought to you by viewers like you. I don't take sponsors on my channel, so if you enjoyed this, if you enjoy any of my other videos, please consider sponsoring me on Patreon, become a YouTube member, click that thanks button on YouTube. You can be a Twitch subscriber, support me on GitHub. I also have merch for sale, coding.garden slash support if you want to support me. Thank you so much. Uh, I am live on twitch.tv slash coding garden right now. Here I come, Twitch chat. Are you there? There it is. That's us. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to be a part of the live studio audience for when I'm recording this episode, definitely come join us over here. Uh, and because because it's a good old time. Look at all these fun people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all righty, everyone. Uh, this has been a view from the garden. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.